Good evening, members of Spiritual Encrypted Encounters. How's everybody doing this evening? Uh, I'm going to send a couple of invites to see who would like to join. Uh, tonight's chit chat. I sent a couple of invites. I know it's I, I didn't set one ahead of time. Uh, just this is just a, a last moment thing that I wanted to do for this evening. Uh, yeah, I just finished watching uh, some football games. Uh, I guess congratulations to both of the team that made it into the into the playoffs. Uh, I just want to talk about, you know, uh, all those pictures uh, that that are the placed here on uh, spiritual encrypted encounters and, and the videos. That I hope y'all en have enjoyed uh, the pictures. Uh, I'm trying to show that different perspective, you know, and the perspective that I'm uh, trying to show y'all because of the pictures is that a lot of this. These figures or creatures that we see, they are, are more of a dem demonic than anything in the flesh. That's why I've shared the pictures. I believe there's a picture where you can see like a like a dogman and a bigfoot together, but you can see them in spirit form. Uh, that's why I place the pictures and I'm placing them out there because I believe there are demonic beings. You know, for those who agree and for those that disagree, you know, I'm just here to say. You know, there, there hasn't been a, a body found, you know, for those who think they're flesh, living creatures, there hasn't been a, a body found or captured in any kind of way. So, of what I experienced, what I've seen, I'm going to continue that theory that there are demonic beings in which we know about the Watchers, the dis disembodied Nephilim, which we know as demons now, where uh, they roam the earth just trying to find a host, uh, somebody with a spiritual opening. So they could uh, attach himself to to them. Now I'm, the, I'm wearing this. My uh, when I was in the in in military, the the unit I fought with was on one three five armor. Uh, that's what who I went to, to combat with when we fought the Medina Republic of Guard in the Battle of Medina Ridge. And for nine years uh, after that, I was in the Cav Station in Fort Hood for nine years. So. I was a calf soldier, uh, being a tanker, you know, we're the ones to go first into, into combat, you know, uh, which is tankers, infantry, uh, we're the first ones to, to answer the call when there is a, a threat, uh, to our nation or when we're, we're, we're sent into battle, you know, uh, so I got to be with a calf for nine years in which I knew the, all the offense and all the defense, uh, how to to overcome uh, any kind of enemy placed in front of us. Uh, you know, and the reason I'm sharing this is because I had a couple of experiences when I was in the CAV uh, out in California. You know, I want to talk about that. You know, we're going to get to some stories when I was in the CAV uh, station in Fort Hood. Um, I, uh, I was in the, this, this place called Fort Orin. Uh, no, it was Fort Orin. It was, a uh, we call it NTC, National Training Center. That's where we would go to train, uh, up in the mountains. And we was always running into, into coyotes out there where they're running around trying, trying to, uh, the scavengers eating trash from the trash cans or whatever they could get a hold of, 
you know, which there was a lot of coyote out there uh, in uh, an NTC in Fort Orwin. Um, the one of the stories I wanted to share of, of Fort Owen when I was there. You know the training that we do. We you know when we're soldiers, especially when we're we're training, we make it as realistic as possible, where we're not, we're not getting enough rest and we're we're bodies are tired, so we're tired so so badly that at times you know our minds uh, play tricks on us because of the lack of sleep uh, and. It's like we're two weeks training constantly, you know, like just training and training and training. And there's, you know, we get really, really tired. But some of the the experiences I've had in California, uh, the first experience that I had that to me seemed kind of supernatural was... I was, we was training out there and we was tired and we all got in our sleeping bags right uh to get some rest and you know everybody's got a a time that they pull guard you know each tank each tank pulls guard you know just decide which member of the tank was is going to pull guard and i i was asleep uh on the tank you know it's a four-man crew and i could feel like um like something on top of my sleeping bag, you know, like something like walking or it felt like drops of, 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 of water or something on top of me, you know, and that's how it felt like on top of the tank, like something was dripping uh, on my sleeping bag. So, you know, uh, as I unzip my sleeping bag, you know, mind you, the desert is very cold at nighttime. You know, I thought it was dew or something in that nature. So when I unzip my sleeping bag, uh, what I noticed was coyotes. There was a lot of coyotes around the tank. You know, like I said, there's a lot of coyotes in, in, in NTC, in Fort Owen. But what was weird is they're around the tank, and there was one, which I believe was an alpha, in which he was all pitch black. I could see his eyes. And he had all the other coyotes around, uh, with him, and they were looking at me. And I know that they were probably looking for food, but there was a lot of them. I say there was like 20 strong. And I was looking at them and they were looking at me. I could see their eyes glowing, uh, towards the tank. So as I'm, as I'm looking at them, the, the first thing that I think is like, well, I need to mark my territory. You know, uh, so what I did is I urinated around the tank so they could smell my, my urine. So they can know, hey, this is my territory. So they were looking, and as they were looking, I guess they got the scent of the urine. Uh, they turned around and walked away. Uh, but what was, I guess to me, that was like the first time I've ever experienced something in that nature where where there was so many coyotes running like that there was an, the other time was when i was in the in the, in the cab it was when i was in in combat you know uh, and i've talked about the story already where i'm sleeping on the front slope and you know for after the war that there's a, something growling nearby me and uh i'm trying to figure out what is it that's coming to growling by my sleeping bag it sounds like a roar of a, of a lion or or something in that nature, or some kind of beast, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing it by my sleeping bag, and then uh, one night I just felt something, uh, I opened up my sleeping bag, I had my, my gear on, because I was going to be ready for whatever it was coming towards my sleeping bag, uh, and I seen something coming at me, I could see it because it was color white, and I jumped up the tank, and we went at each other, it came at me, and I lunged, it, I lunged at it, you know, it tried to jump at me, and you know, I got the best of it, and it took a running. You know, it happened so fast. All I know was a, a big, big dog, or something that looked like a dog or a wolf that was color white that it literally lunged at me. You know, uh, and after that, you know, uh, in the front lines, you know, there was dead bodies, where you know, I guess all these animals that were out there. That's what they were do doing. You know, they were they were feeding off. The, the dead bodies that were out there, you know, when people say that 
oh, dog, dogs won't do that. Dogs, dogs won't kill their, their owners. I'm going to tell you this right now. They're capable of doing anything because uh, I've seen it, uh, front hand out there in combat where you, it could be a, it was an ordinary dogs that were out there, but when the dog is hungry, right? And they haven't been fed, that will eat anything. And that's what I noticed. You know, there was different kinds of dogs that were eating body parts of, of people, you know? So what happens when a dog gets used to eating the flesh of, of human? Well, it's going to come after human that are alive, right? Because it, 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 they think in its mind that it's okay to do that because they were feeding off dead carcasses. So then what's going to, you have the problem of other two things going to happen. Either you're going to have to kill the animals that are out there that have already ate the flesh of, of dead bodies, or you're going to have the problem of them attacking people, right? Because they're going to see us as food. So what we had to do is kill a lot of dogs when we were out there. The dogs that were, I guess the dogs came, they came from miles and miles away because they could smell the, the flesh, I guess, of, of the, of the, of the meat. You know, the, the, the wind in the desert carries and they came to feast, right? You hear stories in the Bible. Where it talks about, I think it was a, the, the dealing with a woman that lived near the, it was a city, a kingdom of a woman that lived, like, it's kind of like New York back, back in the day in the Bible where they said that she fell off her, her castle or wherever she was at and she fell in the street, right? And he talks about that dog just came out of nowhere and they, they, they feasted on her because they said that she was an evil woman. But I don't think they feasted on her because she was an evil woman. They smelled blood, you know, and it was, it was a, a, a kill. They, they see meat. They're going to they're feast, you know, they're going to feast. And that's, that's not just dogs. That's any any wild animal. You know, I'm talking about wildcats, cougars, mountain lions, um, fox, raccoons, weasels. Uh, any kind of animal is going to feast off of meat. You know, that's what they're going to eat, um, because that's 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 in their in their nature is is to feed off meat. So when I hear a lot of stories, you know, of of you know like what I'm sharing with y'all right now, how sometimes people disappear in Mother Nature, and then they find them that they're eating. But the what's lived lives within Mother Nature, they're going to come and feed off uh, the carcass. You know, that's that's what they do. They're gonna go feed off the carcass, and the the the, the body's gonna have different uh, bites on it and stuff from from different animals. You know, like I said, I witnessed it in the front lines, and there's a storm. You know, right after that, it's like the when they kill the dogs, and they we had a body bag detail where you know people had to go pick up body parts, you know, and put them in the in the sleeping bags. And I don't know, I wasn't I wasn't part of that detail. You know, I'm thank God I wasn't part of that detail, but you know, uh, th that's what happens. You know, just like when a, a person gets lost in the woods, you know, uh, that's going to happen. You know, there's critters out there, uh, there's animals out there that they 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 feed on the flesh, and then they're going to come and eat. You know, uh, and uh, you know, going back to me being in the cab, you know, I was in the cab nine years. You know, I shared the story about what happened out there in, in California. Um, but that's when I started, uh, a feeling, I guess you could say the, the spiritual presence of, you know, the, the Indian within me, I guess, in some kind of way, uh, because right after that encounter that happened to me out there in, uh, how you doing, uh, brother Carlito, I'm just, I'm just sharing some stories, brother, of when I was in the calf, you know, I'm going to share with, uh, share with y'all some, you know, um, uh, that I want to share with y'all. Um, then if anybody that's here want to come live with me, that's more, you're more than welcome. Uh, but you know, when I felt the sense of native, native spirits out there in California by those, those coyotes that surrounded my tank, you know, and I had to urinate and they went away. But that the black one in the middle, that's the one that, uh, that, that, that I felt something there spiritually with that. Like that's, that was the leader of that, the, the pack of, of wolves. Uh, there was a leader of the pack of wolves. You know, I had noticed something like that when I was younger, you know, when, uh, 
when I was back home when I was younger, uh, when uh, I found the uh, the head of a, a donkey by my by my doorsteps of my house that I tripped over it, and it's like I was trying to figure out who had placed it there because I had gone inside the house to drink some water, and as soon as I stepped out, I was working out outside. You know, I would like to work out in the in the outside with the weights. And I tripped over something when I tripped up felt and it was a head of a donkey that somewhere or another it got placed in front of my doorstep, you know, and I didn't want my brother and sister to see the set of the donkey that was there. I don't know. I don't know. If it was with a bigger donkey, but it, I don't know it was a pretty good size head. Maybe it would have been a younger donkey. I don't know. Uh, but I grabbed the head and I put it in the backyard and I covered it up with leaves. You know, I didn't really tell my brothers and sisters about it because I didn't want them to be scared. You know, we were all young. You know, I was, uh, I think, like, at that time, like, 16, and everybody was younger than me, so I didn't want them to be scared of going outside, you know, so I, I hid that from them because I didn't want them to be afraid. So I was looking around to see if, you know, I could see anybody. I couldn't see nobody, and the only thing that I seen that was weird is that my dogs came, and my dogs were very obedient, and I will stand my fingers or a whistle. They'll come running to me. Well, that day, I was slapping my fingers. I was whistling. I had like four or five dogs, and there were German Shepherd and uh, part uh, bird dogs, and they wouldn't come. Like they were in a in a in a trance-like state. Then out of nowhere, this black dog comes and stands in the middle of them, and it's kind of like they're listening to him. And that other dog didn't even belong to me, so it, it felt like to me like the dog had a something over them, you know. So. I felt that that wasn't a regular dog, that he had something over them spiritually, you know, like it was controlling. But once that dog left, because I started praying to our father, he turned around and left. And when they left, I snapped my finger once and all my dogs came to me. So I'm just, I'm just sharing with you some stories. Now I'm going back to when I was in the cab, you know, I told you about the, the coyotes that I encountered out there in NTC in Fort Owen, California. I had a couple of accidents out there right after that. As a matter of fact, that I, uh, those coyotes came to me, you know. You know, they say that the natives, the culture, right, uh, that when somebody's sick or, or something's fixing to happen, the shaman will come and pray for the people that are either sick or, or fixing to die, or they can sense this kind of things where something's, is, is gonna happen, so they try to intervene in some kind of way or another. Well, after the incident with the coyotes, like a day later, you know, after I seen the incident and I urinated around the tank, I went up getting in an accident out there where there was this guy that was going to leave the army. He was a gunner and he said he wanted to drive the tank for one more time. And I feel kind of weird about it. But, you know, when you're everybody should be able to do that, the, any job within the tank. So I feel that maybe <clears throat> he knew what he was doing, you know, that he's done it before. So. Uh, he started driving the tank and was doing a mission in which he didn't see the 20 foot drop and I was facing to the rear and when I was going to turn around they just said hold on I, I just heard is hold that's it you know all I know is like we fell down to a 20 foot drop and I flew out of flew out of the tank and I was upside down and I grabbed onto the the, the 240 handles when I grabbed onto the 240 handles when we hit we bounced up again and when we hit the ground, I went straight in into the tank. Uh, hit. I had a CBC, which is a uh, communication device. Well, my my CBC help. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, CBC cover, like a little shell. It got shattered in pieces where I hit the the breach, where the main gun round goes in, and I got knocked out. You know, I don't remember too much after that. You know, all I remember is uh, they pulled me out of the tank and. My eyes are just rolling in the back of my head. You know, it's kind of like, I, I wouldn't know what it is to get uh, knocked out by Mike Tyson, but I got knocked down by the tank. And it was a very strong blow that you could say I was, my eyes just kept on uh, flipping. There were, I couldn't, my my uh, eyelid just kept on moving. I had no, no control over my me seeing, you know, I was just like, they were fluttering. And I could hear people talking to me, but my eyes just kept on moving real fast from the blow to the head where they were just, they told me they were going to take me to, 
to the to get air medevac and I just remember parts and pieces, you know. Uh I remember waking up in the in the emergency room and there was somebody was trying to get a urine sample out of me, you know. Uh and I was getting mad because they wanted to put one of those things uh down there to, to pull out the uh the the blood work. I mean the they wanted to see if I was bleeding from the inside because I guess I hit my head and I, and I, and I bruised up my ribs real bad. But besides that, it's kind of like I felt like the, I was being warned, right, from the night before from those those coyotes that came and the, the, there was a male one. It's like they were letting me know in a sensible way that something was going to happen to be ready, to be prepared, right? And that's how I've seen it as now that I'm older, you know, I take a lot of those spiritual signs uh to uh, a lot of spiritual signs to how should I say to heed you know when I experience those things it's like how did the coyotes know they were there what was going to happen to me the following day you know well as I'm saying the stories you know that happened uh man I was I was bruised up from the ribs I had some cracked ribs uh, man, I couldn't, I couldn't really do nothing. Uh, you know, I was, I was hurt, banged up for the rest of the time I was there. But, you know, in the military, when you're in the front lines, they want you to be a hundred percent ready to go. So I had to heal fast, you know, kind of like sometimes I feel like Wolverine because no matter if I had a, a sprained ankle or a, a bruised knee, cracked ribs, a broken nose or whatever the case might be, they want you to be ready to go at all times and they don't care what you're going through you better be ready you know so it's like i had to find a way to to heal myself in order to be able to to do my my duties right as a as a tanker uh, uh the, the, there was man several experiences that i had uh there was one where i don't know has anybody gotten bitten by, by a poisonous spider or a poisonous snake but when I was in uh, Mississippi in Camp Shelby, you know, we went out there to train the National Guard. So there was this, this tin billets out, tin, tin billets, you know, from back in the day. And there was, it was infested with brown recluse that we, uh, sprayed that, uh, the raid and all kinds of stuff in there. Let it, let it air out. But the, the brown recluse were up through the vents where the air was coming out. And I remember, uh, nighttime when I, when I was trying to get some sleep that I could see this, this brown recluse coming down from the ceiling towards me. And every time it would get close to me, I would wake up and try to hit it, but it would go back up, you know, and it's kind of like, that's the way it was, you know, every time I would see it, I would try to kill it. So it wouldn't try to uh, bite me, you know, um, then, uh, I guess one day, you know, it's like nothing, I didn't see it no more. So I felt, well, maybe it's gone. So I had gone to the swimming pool and, I was scratching on the side of my leg, and I guess the brown recluse had got me uh, overnight where my finger had gone through the skin of my, of my leg, and my finger went into my into my skin where the flesh was getting deteriorated from uh, the bite of the brown recluse. I started noticing uh, hallucinations from that bite that I had to go to the medics so they can give me some uh, Benadryl shots uh, to, to help me from the fever and from the hallucinations that I was getting. Uh, that's in a, uh, you know, just, that's just out of the blue where sometimes there's things out there that we might not get caused hallucinations. Uh, another thing that can happen also when you're out there training, uh, and you know, there's some here that are veterans that have been out there is when you're dehydrated, you know, when you're, you're dehydrated, there's a lot of symptoms that can affect, affect us, you know, when, especially if you're not hydrated properly it can cause hallucinations. It can cause those things like that. You know, imagine how many people that might hallucinate that they don't know that they're hydrated properly right now. And they might be seeing things that are not there because they're having the side effect of being dehydrated, you know, in which they're seeing things that might not be there. You know, uh, there's another thing that can cause you to hallucinate. Uh, the sun, you know, the sun, doesn't matter if, it's, if the sun's out or if it's cold, you always got to drink plenty of water, you know, you got to, you got to stay hydrated, you know, I've been out there in the desert, uh, up in, uh, 
when I was out there in, in uh, Operation Desert Storm, and I went back in '95, and and you have to drink a lot of water out there, or else you will, you will dehydrate, and that's not good for you. Um, another thing that I witnessed also when I was out there in California, I'm talking about some stories in California was uh, where we seen something flying in the air, and it kept on doing us. Uh, changing colors it was changing different colors and at first i thought it was a satellite but it was it was doing a figure eight you know it was doing a figure eight and it was changing different colors and seeing you know that object and we're we're inside the tank we're seeing it with the thermals and we're just seeing this thing moving real fast doing a figure eight in the sky you know and next thing you can see the stars and everything and, and then it's boom it goes straight up into the air and we just look at each other me and i was a, a sergeant I was the gunner and my teacher were just looking at each other and we just lived, we just left it as a, an, a seeing an identified object. We did not call her chain of command to let them know what was going on because, you know, they probably wouldn't believe us. So we just left it at that, you know. When people talk about seeing UFOs, well, I, I witnessed that there, uh, and I witnessed it, uh, out in the, in, in combat also. Uh, they say when there's death, you know, and certain things are going to happen, things like that of the paranormal or things that we don't understand do happen, especially when, you know, how the saying goes, when death is in the air, things happen of supernatural things happen to, to warn us of, to be careful of the, the, the path that we're walking on or to be alert not to take uh, the life that we're doing or at that moment, like the training, to, to be, how should I say, alert 24-7. And that's what I would see it as, you know, when things out of the ordinary would happen, that, that, that will give me the signal to be at a higher level of alertness and to be ready for anything. Kind of like what happened when, to me in Elm's Grove, you know, uh, that made me go into a state of mind of being in combat. That anything was, anything could have happened there in Elm's Grove, in which my level of being alert, uh, we call it in the Army Recon 1. I was Recon 1 big time because I didn't know where the threat was going to come from, whether it was going to come in the form of a person or it was going to come in the form of a, in a spirit, like something demonic. Uh, and, and that's what happened. You know, it came in and it came both ways, you know, something that looked like it was in the flesh. They came at me in spirit, you know, and, but I knew that, that by me, uh, staying spiritually alert, I was going to be able to overcome that, 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 uh, obstacle, you know, because my senses were warning me, you know, about what was happening around me just to, to be ready, you know, um, that's why I make these videos. Here on spiritually encrypted encounters, uh, so people can understand uh, that they have to be ready. You know, like all those pictures that I have there of all the things that that were around there in that area, the things that have happened in that area and Elm's Grove, uh, people have died. You know, whether it's from the from the car accidents on the freeway, whether it was uh, there was a people that died in their sleep. Or there's a house that blew up. People died, a man got murdered, and and many other people that died in that area. You know, uh, there's things that happen in, that when supernatural things start happening, that's, that's telling me or who ain't for anybody to be ready, you know, to be ready so nothing can happen to you. You know, it's, it's, it's letting you know to, to protect yourself. You know, it's letting you know to protect yourself. Uh, for example... When we're talking spiritual, uh, when my tank almost flipped, you know, I had seen an image. I had seen an image. It was in California a couple of years later after my incident. It was like a 95, 96. Uh, something, I seen an image that our tank was going to flip over. So something told me to traverse my turret. You know, the turret moves to the left. It can do a 360. So something told me to move my, my, my turret to the left. As I moved it to my left, that's when the tank almost flipped over. So we were sideways. My t everybody was on the wall. I was on the on the breach. We we're sideways. We didn't know what was going on. 
but I had to reverse my tank to the left. So we were in a sideways for a while, and my my driver was a young private, and he was he was he was scared. And when all this was happening, you know, my my TC tried to jump out and I grabbed him. No, no, don't go, stay here because you don't know, you know, the tank can flip at any time. So I pull him down, and we're just we're just standing there, and we're trying to get help, you know, and. When all these things are happening, you could hear a woman crying outside around a tank. You could hear a woman crying around inside the tank, and we're this we're out there in the desert, you know. There's nothing but sand, and there's no no housing area in the desert. It's all training, training for is a training grounds. So we're hearing this woman crying around the tank, and he, and my gunner's scared, like what the what the hell is that? And you hear that, Sarge? You hear that, Sarge? I said, don't worry about it. It's, it's just nothing. No, that's a woman crying. Don't worry about it. So I started praying to our father, you know, and I said, everything's going to be all right, guys. I'm trying to keep everybody calm, you know, and even though we're hearing this woman crying around the tank. So that's, 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 some, that's telling us that something might happen. When you hear something in the nature, it's the spirits or the spirit realm. He's letting it all. Don't do nothing stupid. Because, hold your ground because anything can happen at that time that when you hear a woman crying this the same death is near right to be careful what you're going to do so when you, we stayed in place and finally they found us they they tied this 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 toe uh this metal uh we call it a toe metal toe to the back of a tank to hold us from flipping over and they got people with lights and they were looking how we were at and the position we're at finally they they secured the tank and they said to, to slide off. So we, we kind of went sliding off the tank like a, like a slide, you know, and the guy, the driver, he was smoking a cigarette, but he was like, there, there were a lot of it. Even I was kind of like, but you know, when, when you don't know if you're going to live or die, you have that adrenaline rush, right? Because of the situation you were at. So the following day, uh, when the sun rose, we seen what situation we, we were in. The only thing, that saved us from flipping over was the gun tube that I had traversed to the left. That it's, it, all the sand went into the gun tube, but it stopped us from flipping over. If I wouldn't have followed my spiritual instincts and traversed the turret to the left, we would have flipped over. And the, we, we most likely would have had casualties. Something uh, severe would have happened. But thank God that that did not happen. Uh, and I just thank God, you know, that nothing like that happened, you know, because anything could have happened. We would have been seriously, seriously hurt. Well, that was a, that was like a 20 foot drop, you know, we would have flipped. They're called in, in the military, they're called, uh, uh, wadis. They're natural, natural cracks in the earth. They're, they're, they're wadis. They're like 20 foot drops or 50 foot drops, 10 foot. The, the, Depends where you're at in the desert, you know, it's like a natural crack in the earth where you can fall down. You know, I've heard of, you know, of training where there's been platoons that fall off those, those wadis and they get seriously hurt. You know, some people, you know, they, 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 pa they pass away from, from that injury because that injury is severe. Um, but after being in, in, in so many close, how should I say, Close calls, you know, that's why I stay spiritually strong, you know. It didn't matter who I served with, whether it was with 1st Armored Division, whether it was with a CAV, or if I was a crash, a crash attached with an infantry, you know. Uh, it didn't matter who I was with. I always uh, follow my senses, my spiritual senses. My spiritual senses have always been with me, you know, and I've used them to the fullest, you know. It uh, doesn't matter whether I was in combat, not in combat, whether I was training, whether I, or how I train now, you know, uh, I've always used my spiritual instincts to follow them. And I'm still here, here thank God, to talk about it, you know. Uh, that's why I created Spiritual Encrypted Encounters. But before Spiritual Encrypted Encounters, it was Positive Spiritualist. You know, I have... Uh, the experience to be able to to lead troops to overcome a, an offensive or defensive threat 
you know, because of where I've been and what I've done, you know, I have the capability, just like I have the capability, I have the capability of being in a situation where I can be outnumbered, but I can still come out of that, that situation by doing the right thing, by following my, my instincts, you know, and I believe that's how I survived what I encountered in Elm's Grove in the woods was by following my instincts, maintaining my love foundation, and I was able to come out of there safe, safely. It would have been a different story if whatever was out there would have attacked me, come at me fist, uh, at a fist, in a physical way, then I would have to fight, I would have had to fight to the best of my abilities physically, you know, and, and most of the time when you're numbered that badly against an enemy, it would have to have, would have to have been death blows. I would have to try to eliminate as many people that were coming at me or whatever it was. I would have to fight in that manner. I just thank God that it didn't happen that way in which, uh, that it, it, to me, it was something spiritual. Well, I was able to sustain it through prayer, right? Because, like I said, I've, I'm hand hand combat or taking care of a target, eliminated a target or a threat. You know, I've done that in the military. Um, but I have a lot of experience, you know, of, of uh, how to handle situations, you know, <laughs> where I've been at, you know, uh, fighting the Medina Republican Guard, you know, uh, there was uh, Saddam Hussein's elite army, uh, which is re his Republican Guard, and we are came real, real fast in combat. Um, but besides that, you know, besides uh, the combat experience, uh, you know, what's made, makes me who I am, and to catch the things that I do is biggest where I've been, I guess, and of what I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of death in my life. I mean, I've been there when it's about the balance, you know, combat, where Either somebody's going to live, somebody's going to die, you know, or well, I've been in areas where something has already happened, like in Germany. When I was in Germany, I was, I was in areas where people have already passed away from prior wars, and I was, I was able to sense their spirits around me. You know, some were of good and some were of negativity that were real, uh, how should I say, uh, Dark spirits, where they were, they wanted to haunt, they wanted to cause bodily harm. You know, uh, people call them other names. Uh, what's the other name for those spirits? Uh, um, I'm trying to think uh, the name of the spirits, which is is actually somebody that passed away, but they're there to cause harm. Uh, in which they're not, they're not fully demonic, but because of what happened to them, they're they're there to cause harm to whoever they can cause harm to. I would say they're called, uh, what's, what's uh, the proper name if anybody's here viewing this? Uh, they're, they're not demonic, but they're, they're, they're evil because they want vengeance and they want to cause the pain and suffering that they, they felt. They want to cause it against anybody that they can. Uh, just, I can't remember the name for that term of, of a spirit. Uh, it's in a very aggressive spirit, you know, and I've, and I've, I, I ran into those aggressive spirits like this in Germany, in the billets, when I used to live in the billets. I ran against this aggressive spirits also in combat. Uh, when I went back in 95, uh, the, the people that passed away, uh, uh, I ran, they're like, like, not a poltergeist, uh, but it's something, it's a, it's a different name. I just can't remember the name, but if I do remember the name, I'll bring it up. And they're very aggressive. Uh, that they'll try to come at you and they'll, they'll try to scratch you. They'll try to do harm to you because, like I said, how they passed away. And they just, uh, I'll, I would say like a, I would say poltergeist might be the word. I'm not, I'm not sure, but there's another name to it that I'm trying to think right now. But yes, um, uh, even though I was in the in the military uniform, uh, my instincts—I would always train my instincts, my spiritual instincts. I would train uh, at, uh, during the day, and I would train at nighttime. You know, my my senses, some spiritual senses. I would put a blindfold. I'd go out into the into the woods when I was in the military in Germany, even in, in Fort Hood, and I would train with my senses, so I could sense things that other people couldn't sense. 
because I would train my senses that way. Uh, I, I could, I could, I could sense when something will come into my, my spiritual bubble. When it could be a person and next thing I know, I grab that person behind me and they're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You know, and I could sense them uh, coming into my, into my, my spiritual bubble. And that's my instincts. You know, I had, I had those instincts in that nature being the front lines in the military, you know, we have to be ready at all times. So I had that a, a bubble of protection around me that I was always ready. You know, it didn't matter. They were coming from the front, from the left, from the rear. When I feel somebody coming into that bubble, boom, I was ready. I would react, react to the situation. There was times that I'd be asleep in combat and Somebody was trying to wake me up, but by the time I would snap out of it, I already got them around the neck, around the around the neck area, and I have a knife already on them, without me even knowing, you know, that because I entered my bubble, my space, and I had my senses that keen, that a keen, that I didn't have to be awake in order for my body to react. My body would just react automatically. When somebody entered my bubble, just like when I would do have to do hand on hand combat, uh, or somebody coming in a thoughtful manner, it was all first in nature that I just react to it. And by the time you knew it, it was already done because, you know, when you train, you know, whoever here, you know, those people that like to train, what you train, you practice it over and over and over. Just when we're in the military, we train different scenarios that could happen over and over and over. So when, it's time to handle business. It becomes fresh to nature, you know. Uh, same way when you uh, train your spiritual senses, it should be fresh to nature. Uh, what I mean about fresh to nature spiritually, uh, you know, for I know there's some people that probably do not believe in the, in the spiritual realm that they're not. They might not believe in the five senses. They might not be spiritualists. But I tell you what, the five senses or the, the senses that I have, I've overcame people. That had don't believe in that. Uh, that might have come at me in a thoughtful manner, and they got handled. You know, they got handled with my spiritual senses. They they got defeated with my spiritual senses. Um, like I said, because I would train daily. Uh, for those who know me here on uh, on my Facebook, you see I work out daily still. Even though my birthday is right around the corner in a couple of days, I still stay active. I still train. I still focus. I still train my senses. Because I know how important it is for me to keep my body going and to be ready, whether it be something physical or something spiritual. I have to be ready at all times. But the main thing of, of anything is to maintain the love foundation. You know, there's some people that are like, well, how can you overcome the enemy with the love foundation? Because the love foundation is the key. You see, the love, the, the love foundation is the key. To all spiritual gifts, which is all senses. So if you maintain your love foundation, then all the senses of the things that you do following your senses to training and everything would be first in nature and you're able to apply that, the love with, a, with your senses and you'll be able to overcome any obstacle that comes your way. Any obstacle, it doesn't matter what it is, you're able to overcome it with the love foundation in which there is no spiritual openings. When you maintain the love foundation, there's no openings. Uh, everything is possible to you for you to uh, overcome a, a obstacle that's placed in front of you. You know, and it's just first of nature uh, that you really don't have to do an, nothing extraneous or, or uh, it's just it's just first of nature, and you come out of the situation without a scratch. You know, I've been in those. The situations numerous times, you know, and I'm here to talk about it. Like I said before, the, but the only thing that ever knocked me out was a tank when uh, I flew out of the tank. Uh, you know, uh, besides that, to my senses, you know, they protect me, like I said, from anything physical. Uh, the spiritual instincts is what pr protects me. You know, it, when you're spiritually grounded, you maintain the love foundation, it makes you, uh, know how to react to a situation, you know. Uh, and I'm talking about for those who are not in the military no more that are already out, you know. When I came out, my, my instincts were always a keen. I was our, 
it's like I was I was in combat mode, you know. But when I placed God first and uh, started using the Love Foundation, it changed my whole perspective of a lot of things. In which it was, I noticed how the balance works. You know, when you're in combat mode, wreck on one, you're ready. You're studying the scenario and you're ready to overcome the threat. You know, normally. When you're wreck on one mode, you see a person as a threat, you know, somebody saying something negative towards you, or they're coming at your network, where well, you see them as a threat and you're able to handle the situation accordingly, right? But spiritually, it's, it's different, right? Because spiritually, you're not going to be able to, to handle a threat, a spiritual threat, through what you know, I'm talking about fighting wise. You're not going to be able to, uh, handle that situation with hatred with anger in any kind of way the only way you're going to be able to overcome that and i'm talking about an unseen force the unseen spiritual forces that are working right now in our society and for those that served in combat we see it we see it on a daily basis and you say to yourself man how how is this things are why do these things happen it's because of the openings right the only way you're going to overcome that you know and i'm going to take my hat off because military is a military spiritually you can overcome it by maintaining a love foundation that's how you overcome the unseen uh should i say oppressors when they they choose to attack they're going to attack you invisibly uh in that nature so doesn't it doesn't matter how many rounds my tank has or had how many doesn't matter if I have saber or heat rounds spiritually all that is out of the question spiritually which when you face something that's unseen that's of the spiritual realm whether you want to call them the watchers the Sabari Nephilim demonic shapeshifters, uh, skinwalkers, uh, uh, operations, poltergeist, you name it, shadow figures. No matter what form they come, the only way you're going to be able to overcome that is through a love foundation because through a love foundation, you're going to be able to maintain your love foundation, which is basically maintain your ground. You're going to Use your senses, your spiritual senses, you can form that protection shield around you through prayer. You call upon your backup. Your backup is not the cavalry in the spiritual realm. Your backup is the heavenly angels. They're going to come and assist because you call upon the higher power to assist you in the situation. And that force, they said that one third fell from heaven that created the legion well everything else that's up there in the heavens is going to come to assist you out of your situation you know i've, I've been there brothers and sisters for wherever he's viewing where where i used to walk and i seen these two giant red orbs or massive they looked like giants red orbs coming they were gonna, they're coming towards me like this. They are going to catch me in the middle. They were going to sandwich me. And I was out in the open in the street. And they were coming at me. I seen them coming at me. And they were massive. So I said, I started praying to our Father. And I called upon the Heavenly Father to come and assist me. When that happened, there was two giant blue orbs that came out of nowhere. And made contact with those red orbs. When they made contact with those red or orbs at full speed... Those red orbs just went into little pieces and disappeared. And the two light blue orbs went up back into the sky. They assisted me because they heard my prayer. And that's how I was able to overcome the spiritual threat. They was coming in the form of a red mass orb uh, through prayer, you know. He said, there's people that might want to believe on what I'm saying. There's people that... They don't want to believe because they want to stick to their theory of uh, being an investigator or whatever the case might be. All I'm going to tell you is this. When I was in the CAF, I, uh, everything I did in the CAF, whether it was an offensive mission or 
or defensive mission, I did it. It was, I was, it was first of nature. Uh, I did it and that's what I were trained to do. Whether I was in combat with the 135 armor, offensive or defenses, I did it. Well, now I'm talking to you spiritually, offensively, defensively, I've done it. And I've done it with the Law Foundation to overcome the enemy. Like I said, there's some people that are not going to believe that. They might say, oh, uh, Brother Abe is weak. Uh, look at my resume. Look where I've been. Like I said, you want to talk for those who live just in the materialistic world and live in the flesh where I've been and what I've done. I've done it. I've experienced it. I've done it in the front lines. Look at the battle on Medina Ridge. I've been there. I've done that. But we all have to find our way in our path in life, right? Well, I find my way in my path in life, and what I'm trying to share with you all right now is my Tenet Love Foundation will help you through anything spiritual. Because as you maintain the Love Foundation, what I mean by maintain the Love Foundation is you have no hatred, no anger in your heart, and there's nobody that, there's no unforgiveness. When there's none of that in the way, you get spiritually blessed to be able to overcome any spiritual obstacle that comes in your way, which makes you a someone, someone unique or someone special. You know, not to give power to anything negative. You know, I see videos where people go through an experience and they want to give power to something negative. The only thing you have to do by not giving it power is not believing in it, right? The first thing... For anybody that, that ever experienced anything, whether it be a knocking, as soon as you hear the first knock, don't wait for the tappy sound. Don't wait in the day when there's a knocking sound or wait three days when there's a banging sound. What you do is, what you do is the first time you hear the tapping sound, you say, you, you take authority. You say, you're not welcome here. You're not welcome here. Leave. You take authority right there and then and say, you're not welcome here. This is, this is my house. Leave. You know, you're letting it know it's not welcomed. Uh, it's, uh, in that nature, that's how you take authority of anything spiritual. You know, there's a lot of people that make the mistake that they give the knocking, the tapping sound power. They give the knocking sound power. They give the tapping sound power. I've, I've made the mistake of that when I went through what I was going through spiritually because all the things were happening. I was, even though I was fighting spiritually, I had an opening somewhere within me that I had to forgive. Once I forgave whatever jurisdiction it had because of the unforgiveness, and once I forgave, it had no more authority over me. Uh, I forgave somebody of, <laughs> imagine this. I was 10 years old that I didn't, that I remembered somebody that I, that I had hatred towards the, when I was 10 years, I had to look, reflect and look all the way back when I was 10 years old. I believe that 10 years old. So I, I found that I, and I, and I uh, forgave that individual when I was 10 years old and all the things that were happening to me spiritually stop because I, I took authority over it. Right. Uh, I, I'm just letting you know how important it is to, to maintain a love foundation. And it can help you overcome anything spiritual. Well, how are you doing, Sister Joanne? Yes, there's always activity, especially when I talk spiritually. There's always a activity around uh, in, in that nature where when I go to sleep, I'll have a dream about something, you know. Uh, uh, like last night, for example, I had a dream. And I was shown something. I was shown my um, domino area, and I see somebody going like this, and I could see like sugar of some sort, you know, or like in the, my domino area. So then I seen a woman in the in the dream, and I didn't recognize this woman in, within the dream. So when when I woke up, I prayed against it. I uh, I prayed against the woman that was shown in my dream, and I and I uh, uh, I prayed against. Her hand going like that towards my stomach area, and I rebuked it in Jesus' name. You know, and I and I said, if, you know, if somebody's trying to do something to me spiritually, to go back to the sender. You know, that it's not welcome. I'm not accepting it. And you have the right to what you accept, uh, whether 
Will you accept something here in the flesh where you're awake or whether you want to accept something in the spirit? You have the authority. It's, it's your, your body, your spirit to say, no, you're not welcome. You, I don't accept you. You know, so whenever you have a, a bad dream or something of that nature, you, you, you can wake up and say, whatever I dreamt about, whatever was shown to me, you're not welcome. You're not allowed. I'm not going to give you power. I tie by and I rebuke you in Jesus name. You know, and, and live it at that. Jesus will intervene and take care of the situation. Uh, since he's, you know, he's a protector. He'll take care of the situation. And that's why I make the videos that I make. And today, you know, it's just uh, something I wanted to talk about, brothers and sisters, you know. Because all this, like, yeah, I might have served the Army 10 years. But at the very end, when it's time to cross over... All that is really not going to matter. You know, what matters is what have we done as, as humans, right? Or children of God. What have we done in this world? Have we done enough in this world to make it into the kingdom of heaven? You know, and that's what it is about. Have we done enough in this world to, to make it into the kingdom of heaven? Have we, have we, uh, maintained love foundation? Have we used love? Uh, the things that come with love to, to, to be able to ascend through that love that we practice daily. Or the foundation that we maintain, do we, have we made it, done enough on this earth to be able to ascend uh, when that time comes for us to cross over, you know? That's why it's very important, not just to maintain love in your foundation, but to, to show that love, to show that love to, to the people you love, whether it be family, friends, or people that might cross your path, that might that might be in the need of help, you know, it's always good to to show that love. But anyways, it's just a quick feed for tonight, folks. Uh, if anybody has any questions about anything, you know, I know everybody's in their own little journey, you know, and sometimes people get caught up with. Uh, how should I say, with things that come in life, you know, and, you know, the, this works that we do, you know, I, I, put, I place pictures there just to, to let people, the awareness, it's the awareness of, of the, the, to be able to be aware of the unseen spiritual warfare that's, that happens here daily. Imagine how many people that are not here that have crossed over, that their spirits are around us trying to warn us, be careful, there's this here, this is here, and, and we cannot hear them. Because we're being bonded in some kind of way or another that we're not able to to hear hear their their, their them telling us to watch out or to look out <clears throat> to be careful because we're being bonded in some kind of way. I'm just giving you an example, you know. And of course, you got people that uh, don't believe in <clears throat> in the higher power, but they don't believe in the. In the angels that don't believe in Jesus Christ, they want a, uh, how should I say, those people with education. They've never been in, in a combat environment. <clears throat> They've never been uh, in spiritual situations. That the only thing they know is what comes out of a book. And that's all they know. <clears throat> they don't want to find a, uh, a logical solution to everything. But what if you cannot find a logical solution to everything? That you're placed in a situation where logical is not going to get you out of the situation. That the only thing that's going to get a, get you out of the situation is by having a love foundation. Just just think about that. There might be one day you're going to wind up in a situation that logic or anything you study or you read or what you got trained in, in school or whatever you, you know, you've done, that that logic is going to be out of the picture. I've seen it where, where people that, that are atheists and there's people that are, that have been wicked where they don't believe in God. Me, I do the sign of the cross and I stick to my faith. And I've, I've come out of that same environment they're in without a scratch, but those individuals, they believe in something else, they've been dropped to the ground and their energy drained. 
you know. Just like people are logic. I've seen them get attacked because, you know, I've seen like uh, the military guy that he was in the military. So I just come back from war. I don't have no fear. I'm not afraid of anything. And that's what he trained for, right? Not to be afraid of nothing. And then he gets attacked by an unseen force. And he gets dropped to the ground. And he gets up his stuff and he runs with fear that he don't understand where why he's he's afraid because he didn't know how to protect himself spiritually. He might have known how to protect himself uh, physically, but not spiritually. And that's why I see a lot. There's a lot of people that are not here amongst us right now. That things have happened to them because they might have been in a situation that they wasn't able to overcome because it didn't have the, the, the faith or belief that a higher power can heal them or possibly get them out of the situation uh, that they were in. But besides that, yes, I've seen a lot of things, <clears throat> especially on Fort Hood. Uh, there's a lot of uh, native activity there, brothers and sisters, dark shadow figures. Um, I've seen uh, this, this shaman-like, uh, shapeshifter-like uh, beings. Uh, where they're wearing the, 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 uh, the skin, the, the coyote skin on their back. I've seen them, uh, in the, in, on Forehood and I've seen them on where I used to live. I've seen, uh, native women. They're coming out of the wood lines and, uh, dressed a certain way with garments that look like they, they have like either a deer print or a cougar print on them. But then, you know, they, they go back into the darkness or whatever. You know, I've witnessed these things. You know, there's, like I said, there's other, other things that do exist. You know, it's just, uh, people have to be open minded, open minded to be able to see what's going on in order to handle the situation, you know. You're welcome, uh, Sister Joanne. You're very welcome, Sister, uh, Sister uh, Joanne. Look, you know, I always have that saying, always maintain the love foundation. That's the key. The reason I say that, that I say that about always maintain the love foundation, because having hatred, anger, or anything they've been trained, right? Well, it doesn't matter if it's martial arts, boxing. If you don't have a love foundation and you have anger and hatred, that's not going to help you spiritually to overcome a spiritual threat. I'm talking about something that's unseen, like something demonic, the disembodied Nephilim, whatever you want to call them. You're not going to be able to overcome the situation without a love foundation. So it's very important to have a love foundation. Because you see, when you have a love foundation, there's no, there you have a love foundation, there's, You've already forgiven everybody. They, they can't hold you back. You don't have no anger in your heart and you have no hatred. So they have no openings to be able to stop you from overcoming the situation of the threat because through a love foundation, we can call upon the Heavenly Father to come and take care of the situation. You know, you hear where people have weapons, right? There's uh, hunters. They're out there with a, with a squatches and a, Dog man, but me and I know them as something else, you know, dem demonic beings that can manifest into any form. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of weapon the hunter has, doesn't matter what kind of knife, they're not going to be able to overcome a spiritual threat with any kind of weapon or anything man made. They're not. I'm just, I I'm being truthful. They're not going to be able to overcome, no matter how bad they are, or they think how bad they are. They're not going to be able to overcome it through the flesh. The only way they can overcome a, a situation in that manner is spiritually. That's, that's all I can say. That's the only way you're going to be able to overcome, to be able to come out of a, a threatful, spiritual threatful situation is by maintaining the foundation. That's the only way. 
Uh, that's why a lot of people that said that they shoot at big forests or they shoot at a dogmen or other cryptids and that they said that there's no, there's no, they can't hit them because they're not here in the, in the flesh. They're in the spirit. I'll tell you what, I've, I've tied him, I've, uh, tied, binding, rebuked, uh, dogmen, uh, something that looked like a Bigfoot, uh, Something that looked like a shapeshifter in, through Jesus Christ's name. And when I did that, they disappeared. Uh, I've done this to, to an individual back when I was uh, young, when I was like 15, 16 years old, that was offering me all kinds of stuff. And I stood my ground and I said that I, I'm a, I want to stay my faith with, 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 with uh, Jesus Christ, with God. And I started saying to our Father, and as I was saying to our father, whatever was there, he said he can't be there. Uh, but there, there was going to be a time that God wasn't going to be with me. So I kept on saying to our father. And next thing you know, he just vanished in thin air, you know, and you could smell sulfur and stuff like that. I'm just letting you know that that does exist, you know. And if anybody has an experience like that, I'm just letting you know through my experiences how to overcome it. And the only way you can overcome something like that is through a love foundation. You can't have no openings. The openings you can have is like, for example, you know, the one I said is unforgiveness, family grudges, or you're mad with your girlfriend, with your, uh, or, or something in some nature in that way. Uh, anger, hatred, that just gotta be out of the picture. In order for you to, to utilize the blessings that come by maintaining a love foundation. All those spiritual blessings of discernment come through a love foundation. But anyways, brothers and sisters, I hope you all enjoyed tonight's live feed of what I've been talking about. Basically what I'm telling you, what I've been through, and what I've done for my country. I've done it. That's the past. Um, I remember everything that I've done. But when I faced this unseen force, it didn't matter if I was in the cavalry or on the 135 armor. I wasn't able to overcome it in that manner. Uh, I overcame it with the Love Foundation. That's why I'm talking about this. You know, and for those that, that are, how should I say, uh, thriller seekers that are out there, they're just making videos just to see what they find because... They don't want to get a popular with, with likes because of what they're, they're recording or what they're seeing. You know, just be careful. You know, that's all I can tell you. You know, you got to have some kind of belief in something, but I'm going to tell you what. So the, the, the biggest belief that you can have within yourself to overcome a situation like that, if you ever run into a situation is, is saying the Our Father is one and we begin through the name of Jesus Christ. But the, the big thing about that is when you say, say this, when you say the Our Father, you rebuke it. You have to truly have the faith to believe within yourself, right? Towards the Heavenly Father. That's the only way that's going to work because those energies, they know what's around us. Now I said the, the watchers, the Sabbat and Nephilim, which was created by the watchers and the women of those times, you know, you got the children of the Lilith. Then you got uh, what we, we know is now as demonic beings, you know, the one third, uh, which is the legion and other things, right? That they know what's here and they know what's here. They know what's in your mind and they know what's in your heart. So they can easily try to deceive you. So that's why, like I said, you have to maintain a love foundation and to be able to use your spiritual gifts of discernment to be able to know how to handle that situation. But anyways, I want you to say a little prayer before I go. Uh, Heavenly Father, at this time, I'd like to pray for all my brothers and sisters here on uh, Spiritual Encrypted Encounters, Positive Spiritualist, and all the the sites that I share this with. I just want to uh, tell everybody to love one another, uh, to maintain a love foundation, but not to give power through fake or false promises by the unseen, 
but to maintain your love, love foundation because you're a child of God. And as a child of God, when you're sent up, up into the kingdom of he heavens, the greatest gift of all gift is to live. Your spirit is going to live forever. So don't be deceived what man has to offer or from the false promises of the unseen. Uh, you are somebody. You are somebody special. Uh, we're all equal. And you have the opportunity, just as I do, to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we tie by the rebuke any negative energies from this feed or from any other uh, feed or from any openings that somebody might have. We tie by the rebuke those negative energies at this time. This I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you all. Have a beautiful, blessed evening. Peace, everybody.